Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today, Sunday morning, we had another great meetup online with Gregory Short's Poor Typist YouTube channel and his Typewriter Club, which is, what is this, maybe the fourth or fifth uh, week we've done it in a row. It's, it was a lot of fun. Today's topic was on typewriter maintenance. And uh, Gregory had asked me during the live stream if I had any uh, current maintenance things that I was working on as far as ideas. I said at the time I didn't really. I think I mentioned that I might be doing an update video to uh, adjustments I was doing earlier to my Groma Calibri. But after the meeting, I sat out on the patio, decided to take the Royal Quiet Deluxe out for a spin and typed up a little one-pager for the One Typed Page blog. And uh, in the process of doing that, I noticed I had a little bit of piling up of letters occasionally where one letter would not be spaced properly it would happen a little bit too soon in relationship to the other letters around it. So what I was thinking is I needed some kind of reference material and I remembered that I have the manual typewriter repair Bible. This is one of the typewriter Bibles that Ted Monk puts out and this one here covers basic mechanical theory and in troubleshooting information on typewriters. It covers a lot of the old standard uh, upright typewriters and it also covers some of the mid-century American brands of portable typewriters including this general era of Royal Quiet Deluxe. So hey, I was in luck. So, so the problem is when I type very rapidly staccato-like I can get letters to pile up. The spacing isn't happening as quickly as I'd like. And one of the things I like about this manual is there's a troubleshooting section in here. So it lists a series of symptoms and down here you'll see crowding and or piling and there's a series of remedies or things to check and then based on brands whether it applies to you. So this is our Royal right here. And so there's some things to check here that might apply to that. Some of the things might be vibration of the machine because of a flimsy desk, erratic touch of the operator. So my staccato touch typing is a really difficult test for this. I can induce it, but if you're a smoother typer, you can eliminate a lot of that just by your technique anyways. Things like the binding and things like that in the escapement, but there's also the tension. And one of these, I couldn't find it here. Oh. Uh, insufficient mainspring tension. So I did tense up the mainspring quite a bit. It's about as tense as I want it. Okay, so the spring motor is one thing I want to make sure is wound properly. So there's an adjustment screw in the middle of the spring motor that I can turn clockwise to tension up the motor. Well, to gain access to adjust the tension of the uh, spring motor, you're going to have to take off this rear panel and that entails removing uh, two screws, one on either side. And once those screws are removed on either side, you can pull this panel out. You may have to uh, operate the uh, carriage release levers to move up this bar, but that enables you to move that panel and then you'll have access in here to the spring motor itself. Okay, that screw is right here in the middle of the spring motor and you can access it from the back and you may have to push the backspace key to get the backspace lever out of the way, but it's basically right there and I can turn it clockwise to tension up the spring motor some more. So I did a, a series of tension adjustments to the spring motor and it's about as tight as I want it to be. It really hasn't made much of a difference at all in terms of piling on of letters. So I think my spring motor has sufficient tension. My carriage seems to be moving freely also. I have no problems with that. It moves nice and free here. And uh, all the rest of this feels pretty good really. The, the star wheel, the pinion shaft, and a lot of the other stuff, the escapement rocker, they all seem to be working normally. I didn't see any issues with the tabulator rack binding or um, the uh, universal bar pivots or anything like that. So it's a nice little troubleshooting guide though. So as we look at the way the spacing happens on this typewriter, this is called a full spaced machine because the type bar, as it moves toward the platen, does not move the carriage until the printing happens and then after the printing happens it moves one full space. And the same thing with the space bar. A full press of the space bar doesn't move the carriage. The release of the space bar moves the carriage. So it's a full space machine. The movement happens after the printing. 
Okay, so let's look at the timing of the escapement when it trips and releases. I'm going to place my microphone here on the ribbon cover so you can hear it a little bit easier. Okay, so when I operate a key lever, let's say one of the middle keys, as it gets toward the platen, right there, click, print, right there is the trip. I'm suspecting what might be happening with the piling on of letters is when one of the keys has made the initial tripping of the loose dog, the printing is happening, then another key from the other side of the segment comes in there before the tripping can actually happen of the first key. It might cause a piling on. So there's initial trip and before the carriage can actually move, the other letter comes in and maybe right as it's moving, it does the second one before the carriage has an opportunity to do a full space. So page 248 is escapement action for Royal Portables and it has the entire adjustment setup procedure for the Royal Portables and includes a nice diagram here of how those parts work together, interact to make it happen. So according to this manual, the tripping should take place when the face of the type bar is about 3 eighths of an inch from the platen. Okay, so I have a set of calipers here and I'm going to make an attempt to try to measure the distance between the platen and when the type bar trips it. Let's see if I can figure that out. right there. And it looks like it's significantly shorter than three-eighths of an inch. Three-eighths of an inch would be right to here and it's tripping about 330 seconds shy of that so it needs to trip a little bit sooner apparently according to the manual. Okay here we see the underneath side of the machine near the escapement and this silver colored piece is what we're interested in. So first of all the space bar Spacebar pulls on this arm from this linkage here and then a typed letter operates this little angled arm when the key linkage strikes the U-shaped bar underneath the segment it's going to strike this right side of that same silver bar like that and either of those actions either the spacebar or the typing is going to move this arm up here to trip the escapement, right like that. Okay, down deep in the machine, right here is the escapement, the star wheel to your right, and then the loose dog and the rocker arm to the left right here. So as I press a key, that rocker rocks down and the loose dog slips off the star wheel, and then as you release the key, that loose dog is caught by the next tooth of the star wheel. There and there. There and there. And so uh, it looks to me like the timing of all that from what the book says, it looks like it's good. It, as you press a key hard, it barely releases it. There's no additional play in that. And then as you release it, it captures it by the next tooth. So I think the rocker arm and all that and the loose dog looks good. So right now the type bar is, is at rest position. As the type bar approaches the platen, this gets pushed down. What we want is to have this pushed down sooner. Yeah, we want to bend this arm up a little bit so that it trips, it rotates this arm sooner. Well, I'm going to try bending this up a little bit. A little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Well, let's test it and see. Well, it looks to me like it's more consistent now. I have much more consistent spacing, much, much less incidences of piling on. I don't think it's perfect yet, but it's much better than it was. Well, the Royal Quiet Deluxe wasn't doing the piling on of letters very often, only maybe three or four times on an entire page. 
but I know that it was happening more toward the bottom of the page as I started to type a little bit more rapidly, and I was doing more of a what I call a staccato typing style, where instead of typing each character at an even pace, I was typing some of the characters very quickly, one after the other. And it was during those moments when they're, the type bars, one is heading toward the platen, one is coming back from the platen, that I think it was causing issues with the timing of the escapement to, and, and when it trips the carriage. Even trying consciously not to do that, there were times when that would happen, especially when I got into more rapid typing. So I think the adjustments I made to the trip point of the escapement definitely helped. Um, and I think a lot of that, along with just being a little bit more careful to my typing technique, I think it, the problem is pretty much resolved. It could also be that the uh, design of the typewriter is maybe a little more susceptible on these royals for the piling on of letters than other typewriters. The example would be the um, Smith Corona portables from the 1950s, the 5 series so-called. Um, I rarely ever see piling on of letters in that typewriter. I see more often it's more sensitive to skipping, which is sort of the opposite problem. So I think some of these different typewriter brands, just the design of how they work, they're more susceptible to certain problems than other brands are. So in this case, the Royal piling on of letters and just got to be a little bit more careful about your typing action along with having the machine properly cleaned, degreased, lubricated, and adjusted. Well, there you go. A little bit of typewriter tinkering, and this reminds me that part of owning a collection of manual typewriters is you're constantly going to be finding slight imperfections in your machines. Maybe something you didn't notice before, but when you sit down and use it and study it more judiciously, you might find some little problem nagging that you say, oh yeah, that could probably be uh, be tinkered with. And I'm reminded of a person like you might remember Jay Leno, the former Tonight Show host, who has an enormous collection of antique and classic cars. And you can imagine his collection of cars that numbers up into the hundreds, I think, is something that probably requires constant tinkering. Like, I'm sure his entire collection isn't perfect. I'm sure every one of his cars, because they're old, has some little problem. And so that's probably the way it is with manual typewriter collections as well. Is over time we notice and where we begin to address more of the little issues and hopefully we get the big issues resolved so the machines are all functional and then we can sit down and address these little problems like that, the little nagging ones. And the ideal end state is that every machine works flawlessly, but I think the reality is you'll probably never get to that end state because of the nature of manual uh, typewriters, the mechanical design. Um, so that's the fun part about it, right? It is a whole process. It's not just collecting, but it's tinkering, adjusting, and using them. And that's the most important thing, I think, is the using them, being creative with them. And so, with that being said, I wish you guys the best. I hope you stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Until next time, bye-bye.